today, I'm going to be flying with Qantas on the A330 in economy class and finally heading overseas for the first time in two and a half years, flying from Sydney to Singapore on QF81. I just got myself an orange juice and some food coming soon. And uh, I think I have about maybe an hour and a half until boarding. So very much looking forward to it. But for now, we'll start where we left off last week as I've just arrived into Sydney from Adelaide and am now at the Qantas Transfer Lounge ready to head over to the International Terminal, or also known as Terminal 1. Okay, I'm currently on the transfer bus now, heading over to the International Terminal, and uh, we'll make our way and get on flight QF81 over to Singapore. The great news is that the Qantas Seamless Transfer Bus has been back operating for over four months. And as I'm connecting from Adelaide to Singapore via Sydney today, I'm eligible to use this service. So after boarding from gate 15 in the domestic terminal, we are using internal airport roads, making the 10 minute journey over to terminal one. After making my way through customs and security, I found myself looking for somewhere to eat and decided upon the kitchen in the international terminal. Okay, greetings and welcome back to another video. So, as you would have seen from a few days ago, I made it over to Sydney, and now I'm in the uh, International Terminal for the first time in uh, two and a half years at least, and I am going to be flying on QF81 over to Singapore. So yeah, this morning was a bit of a schmozzle to be honest, uh, as you would have seen from my last video. The, uh, the queues in Adelaide were right outside the door, or close to the door anyway, and uh, thankfully they allowed me to rush through and uh, I'm sure all the people in the line wouldn't like that too much. But yeah, I'm just here in the, uh, one of the cafes, cafeterias here. Uh, hopefully it sticks. No, it won't hang out there, that's all good. But I just got myself an orange juice and some food coming soon. And uh, I think I have about maybe an hour and a half until boarding. So very much looking forward to it. After indulging in a $20 orange juice and banana bread toast, I continue my spending spree with a couple of waters for the flight. Today we boarded from gate 32, and as I'm sitting in seat 37K, this means I was in the last group to board today's flight. With two aisles and economy seating in a 242 layout, I only have one passenger next to me today. With a width of 17 and offering a pitch of 31 inches, I generally find these seats to be quite comfortable, as I've spent up to 10 hours in these seats numerous times before. Okay. Like to welcome back to One World Cricket Flight, and this flight to Singapore. The Seatback Entertainment System offers a variety of movies, TV shows, music, and my personal favourite, the flight map and information to follow along the progress of our journey to Singapore. Please place your bags either under the seat in front of you or in the overhead lockers. If you're seated at a bulkhead or in an exit row, all baggage needs to go to the overhead lockers. Now it's time to switch your phone and any other devices. Uh, once completed, we will push back and quite a long taxi to the southern end of the field and turn around and take off towards the north today. A lovely view of Sydney on the right hand side as we said heading to Singapore with a flight time of 7 hours 55 minutes. Uh, mainly smooth conditions en route, uh, we've got uh, uh, Singapore forecast, uh, usual um, uh, wet season up there, so chances of showers this evening around about 30 degrees Celsius. Before takeoff, I should also mention today's aircraft for those interested, which is VHQPB. But for now, let's enjoy the taxi to the southern end of the airport for takeoff on runway 34 left.
For today's flight up to Singapore, I've been meaning to watch the latest Top Gun, but notice the headphones don't fit me that well. Either I have a small head, or these things are made for humans with heads the size of basketballs. It's okay though, I know the answer. It's why I don't wear hats. As I usually need to explain in all my videos, I have celiac disease, hence I need to have a gluten-free meal. To be honest, this is another way for me to gauge an airline service, depending how well catered an airline is for passengers with dietary requirements. And I'm not just speaking for people like myself, but also those from different religious and cultural backgrounds that require certain meals. So I like to see the effort that is put into making these meals for passengers. You'd be amazed and surprised at some of these so-called amazing airlines I've been left with just a banana or some fruit and crackers. And in all honesty so far, Qantas is the best for me. I totally understand that some of these other airlines may not have a large demographic of Western travelers with certain food allergies or flights to and from countries with specific cultural dietary requirements. But in my opinion, if you're flying in and outbound Australia flights, you need to cater to those with these certain dietary requirements. We encountered some very light turbulence just before the cabin was about to begin meal service for the majority of other passengers. And after climbing a few thousand feet, we found smoother air. Meal options for passengers on today's flight with a braised wagyu beef with broccoli, carrots and soft polenta, red curry chicken with jasmine rice and choy sum, tandoori cauliflower, tikka masala and fragrant rice, or rosemary garlic, sea salt and olive oil focaccia, with an ice cream for dessert. Unfortunately, the USB port just under my entertainment screen is not working today, which is also the same for my neighbour. To be honest, this is quite a pain for an 8 hour flight. Thankfully I have my laptop to charge from. I found cabin crew to be friendly and attentive on today's flight. On the two occasions when I pressed the service button for a zero sugar coke, the whole process wouldn't have been more than a few minutes. And around an hour and a half before arrival into Singapore, I received my second meal for the flight, this time a pie and an apple, whilst other passengers received a chicken and cheese and caramelised onion relish panini, or a vegetable samosa. We began our descent into Singapore 7 hours and 18 minutes after takeoff in Sydney. However, it wasn't long before the captain made an announcement and mentioned we were going to do three holding pattern manoeuvres due to bad weather in Singapore. We'll start our descent into uh, Singapore in about 10 minutes time. Uh, there's a three hour time change between uh, Sydney and Singapore this time of the year. Current time in Singapore has just gone uh, 5 pm in the afternoon. On our current estimates, we should have you disembarking the aircraft at uh, around 5.50. Weather conditions for our arrival into Singapore. Some showers are just moving uh, through the airport at the moment, and uh, there's a light uh, northerly breeze. As we began our holding pattern, I looked out over at the clouds, which is something I always remember seeing in this part of the world. The clouds just seem so huge and different to anywhere in Australia. Before I provide my opinion on the excellent, the good, and the not so good, we'll make our final descent into Changi Airport and taxi to parking right in front of the jewel.
Well, we're here in Singapore now, and that means the second leg of my trip is over before we head off to Kuala Lumpur on an AirAsia A321neo in next week's video. But before I sign off, let's talk about the excellent, the good, and the not so good. So first off, the excellent. The food provided for those with dietary requirements. So like I said, it's rare I get a decent meal on a plane. But at least when I'm with Qantas, I know I'm going to be looked after and not have to worry about bringing snacks along to tie me over throughout the flight. But now for the good. The touchscreen entertainment, flight information, and map. You see, I found the movies and docos to be up to date and have a great selection that I believe will suit all different tastes. There's also podcasts and music. The seats are quite comfortable for someone of average size. Alongside this, the storage available in front of you is quite good, with room for charging cables, iPads, and possibly small laptops. But now for the not so good. So when flying an eight hour plus flight, or even five hours plus for that matter, to not have any power for charging in the USB and the AC below the seat is not good. My neighbor and I alerted the cabin crew to this, and hopefully they noted down our seat numbers that we would not move to different seats. I didn't expect this, nor really cared as I had power available for my laptop. However, I did see some available seats behind us. Whether they had the same problem or not, I am unsure. But anyways, if you've stuck around to watch the video this far, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm almost to that 1000 subscriber milestone, and it would mean the world to me if you could help me out. But until next Tuesday, thanks for watching, and all the best.